This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, so if you're looking to buy or sell cards, then definitely check out their site linked in the description. I'm a big fan of how they do business, so check them out and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! combo tutorial video, and this time it is going to be another simplified World Chalice combo tutorial video. Basically a video that's more oriented towards the people that are having trouble understanding the fundamentals of what you should be doing with the World Chalice deck, getting you to a nice, good, advantageous point where you're able to meld your ending boards, getting you to a good middle ground, a good middle point in your combo sequencing, and getting you out of the early game in terms of how your combo sequencing goes, because I know a bunch of people that don't really understand this deck because they have a lot of variables and hypotheticals thrown at them over and over again when they're just trying to understand simple combos, and it's very hard to understand that if you don't already understand the core deck mechanics, so that is the void that I'm trying to fill with these videos. I'm trying to show you simple combos that involve only two to three cards and are very easy to shortcut in your mind to get you to a nice, well-rounded middle ground point. Now, what is a good middle ground point, a good middle combo point? Basically, it's pretty common to just assume that the good middle point in your combo is going to be summoning Dengirsu and drawing two to three cards, because at that point you have a very well melded field, you have a lot of cards you've just drawn, and from that point you have a lot of variables going into what you could do to meld your ending board and your ending play, and there's really too much to quantify there in the terms of the scope of a regular combo video, and you just start getting really confusing and really very specific and nitpicky and things like that. So I can't really show you anything towards like making an ending board with this deck, but I can show you a simple two card combo that gets you to a Ningirsu draw three and gets you to a nice middle point where from there you should be able to figure it out on your own. This is going to be my center field marker for this video because I'm not playing on a mat with zones. And what I'm going to be showing you today is a two card combo of Lee, the World Chalice Fairy, and Transmodify. Now this is a combo that's going to be using the Agent of Creation Venus. I think Venus is a fantastic card for the World Chalice deck. I personally like it really, really, really a lot in terms of what it allows the deck to have combo potential wise because Venus by itself is for link materials essentially. And I don't quite understand the people that aren't playing it in their lists because it is such a powerful one of normal summon card or being able to access it off Lee with Transmodify and things like that. But so this combo is going to be just a two card combo, Lee plus Transmodify, so you will have three other cards in your hand, but it does not matter what those three cards are, so we're not even going to look at them. And what this combo does is this combo lets you draw four cards, three off Ningirsu and one off Daigusso Emerald, and you end your board with four Link Monsters, ready to go into Firewall Dragon loops and things like that, but then you also have seven cards in hand. So without further ado, let me show you what that is about so I can try and keep this video neat, clean, and concise, essentially. But so you're going to start your combo with Normal Summoning Lee, the World Chalice Fairy, and it is going to add World Legacy World Chalice from your deck to your hand if you did not have it already. And then from there, you're going to activate your Transmodify, sending Lee, the World Chalice Fairy, to the graveyard, summoning the Agent of Creation Venus, and you're going to summon it in the farthest zone away from where you're going to be doing your extra deck summoning. I'm going to be doing my extra deck summoning in the right hand extra deck monster zone, so I'm summoning Venus all the way over in the left. If you were going to be using the left monster zone, then you'd summon Venus in the far right. Uh, you want to make sure that it's as far away as possible so that it does not get in the way for your combo sequencing from here on out. So you're going to use Venus, pay 1500 to summon all three shine balls out of your deck, and then from here we're going to start link summoning. We're going to use one of the mystical shine balls to link into Imduk, the World Chalice Guard Dragon. It is a link one that requires a normal monster, so you've fulfilled that with the shine ball. And Imduk gives you an additional normal summon for a World Chalice monster in addition to your normal summoner set. So we're going to utilize that effect. And we're going to tribute one of the mystical shine balls to tribute summon World Legacy World Chalice out of our hand. Now the reason we're doing this is to get its graveyard effect of when it was tributed and it's sent to the graveyard, which is what we're about to do right now. So you're going to link with the Imduk and the World Legacy World Chalice into Orum, the World Chalice Blade Master. They link two that requires two Star Grails, or excuse me, two World Chalice Monsters. I really like Star Grails as a name for this deck a lot more than World Chalice, so I infrequently call them by their original OCG names. But anyway, World Legacy World Chalice's effect will trigger in the grave because it was Tribute Summoned, and you will be able to summon two World Chalice Monsters out of your deck, and in this case you're going to summon two Beckoned by the World Chalice. Now from here you're going to use the last Mystical Shine Ball that is here, and you're going to use it to make a second copy of Imduk. Now we can't get another normal summon because that's not how the rules of Yu-Gi-Oh work. In this instance, with how these card effects are worded, you can only get Imduk's additional normal once per turn, uh, but you are just using it to basically put the Mystical Shine Ball in Grave so that you can get full value of the Digusto Emerald that we're about to make with the Venus that is still on the field that is currently being glared out on camera. But so you're going to make Digusto Emerald using the, using the two beckons, and you're going to detach a beckon off Digusto Emerald, 
and you're going to shuffle back your three mystical shine balls. Now from here, you're going to get your first draw of the combo, so you're up to four cards in hand again, but the card that you drew literally does not matter at this point or stage in the game. Well, it kind of does, but for the purposes of this combo, it doesn't. If you add any monster or any combo extender to any of these two card combos, they very easily become firewall dragon loops and extra link combos. So like this deck is very powerful for that essence, and it's a very powerful ability that Venus gives the deck, being able to just use very few combo pieces to do extra links and things like that. So it's actually really cool cool but anyway so all your shine balls are in theory back in the deck again unless you drew one of them in which case it's still summonable out of your hand off venus but so you're going to pay a thousand with venus to summon your two shine balls yet again and then from here you're going to link summon with one of the shine balls and the digusto emerald into eb the world chalice priestess specifically in the center you want it to be in the center of your mat no matter what side you're using and you want imduk to be over here uh, so you basically just reverse all the card placements if you're using the left zone versus the right. But Eb and Digesto Emerald should always be in the center when you're doing this combo. But so from here, you can use Venus's effect again, paying another 500. So you've paid 3,000 life points total during this combo sequence to summon the last Mystical Shine Ball out of your deck. And now from here, you're going to link with the Venus and the Mystical Shine Ball on your field into a proxy dragon now i still haven't gotten my physical copy of proxy dragon so still using a proxy proxy dragon oops unprofessional unlike unsubscribe but anyway so from here you still have a card that you can summon so you can use the mystical shine ball here and you can link into a link spider or you can link into a third imduk if you're playing three of it in your extra deck it's really not specific what you have to make you just have to make a link one and in this instance link spider is probably just the better one because you've probably used all your imducts unless you are playing three like i've already said but so from here you fulfill the requirements to summon your ningirsu which is two link monsters and they form a link three two being the proxy dragon and one being the link spider so you're going to link with the proxy dragon as two materials and the link spider for one into a Ningirsu, the World Chalice Warrior. And now from here, there's no fancy chain links you have to worry about. The Ningirsu's effect will just trigger, allowing you to draw a card for every World Chalice card that it points to, of which there are three, so you will draw three additional cards. So this is the ending middle ground point of the combo sequence. You have drawn into four additional cards. You have three that you started out with, you drew with into four more. You have four Link Monsters on the field, very easily can you start going into things like Firewall Dragon and stuff like that. The Aurum has not used its effect yet to revive anything, which is very key, which means that you can use Ningirsu and Imduk to go into something like Firewall Dragon in this zone, and then any other monster, World Chalice monster, you're able to summon out of your hand off of these two cards going to Graveyard, can go into this zone, which you can use with the Aurum to bring back the Ningirsu in this zone, pointing at the Firewall Dragon, so then you'd have Eeb and Ningirsu pointing at a Firewall Dragon right here. There's a lot of different variations that you can go with down the line from this combo middle ground point. From the point where you summon Ngirsu and you draw all these cards, this is the point where things become very, very non-specific, very varied, very variable, and very nitpicky in terms of who thinks what combo string is better, who thinks you could do this with Firewall Dragon versus this, what you should be doing with this versus that, what's in your extra deck matters, all that sort of stuff. So it's really nitpicky and really hard to make a full-fledged combo video about where you should be ending your total board. But what I can show you is I can show you how to get to this point easily and quickly. And like I said, the Aurum is still loaded with its effect. It has not used its effect yet, so it gives you a lot of flexibility with what you can do later in your combo sequence. You can make these into a Firewall Dragon just immediately because it's a Link 1 and a Link 3, so that can make your Link 4 for you. And you've drawn so many cards that if you don't have World Chalice cards in your hand, even if you have monsters in your hand, you can use Lee's Graveyard effect to add herself back to your hand by sending a monster from your hand to Grave, so you can summon it out of your hand when you make the Firewall Dragon sending these to Grave. There's so many different variables and things that happen from this point, but this is essentially what you should be looking at. This is where you should be, and that is all that I wanted to show you for this video. You end with a plus six overall. You started with two cards, and you generate eight cards out of it, not including the original three. So you end with eight cards, and then three extra cards, meaning 11 cards total to your name, which is very good for your ability to combo on forward but anyway as always guys thanks for watching drop a like if you want to see more subscribe if you're new around here and want to see more awesome Yu-Gi-Oh videos and links as always in the description of my facebook fan page as well as my personal patreon page if you like my videos and want to support my ability to continue making content then patreon is the absolute best way to do so it also enters you into a monthly raffle giveaways for significant amounts of Yu-Gi-Oh product so definitely check that out 
Special thanks to Travis Miller, Iradium, Jay Garcia, Yuki Phoenix, and Troy Perkins, as well as everyone else currently supporting me on Patreon this month. You help out a lot more than you may know, and you have my eternal gratitude. But as I've already said, thanks for watching, thanks for your time, and as usual, guys, take care. I'll see you in the next video.